As the 2010s come to a close, it's normal to sit back and think about everything that's happened over the past decade. From elections to 4K televisions, there hasn't been a dull moment in the past 10 years. With sports gaming, it's no different. From the rise of collectible card game modes like Ultimate Team and Diamond Dynasty to the lack of AAA alternatives, there's plenty to talk about and debate. The industry has gone through so much change since 2010 that it may be hard to actually remember everything, but it's important we do. What has sports gaming become and where is it going? These are the questions that need to be answered and we're going to be doing that by taking a deep look at the state of sports gaming. We can't talk about where sports gaming is today without talking about how we got here. Back in the 2000s, especially the earlier days, the competition was at its best. There were options for hardcore sim players as well as games for the casuals that just wanted a fun, simpler experience. I'm talking about games like NBA Street, NFL Street, NFL 2K, SSX, NBA Live back when it was a legit alternative, and more. Hell, there were even games like College Hoops 2K and NCAA Football. It seemed that no matter what you were into, there was a AAA or indie option to sink your teeth into. But then, everything changed. In 2008, EA Sports introduced Ultimate Team to FIFA 09. The card collectible mode allowed players to build super teams by earning rewards and players to field the best roster possible. While the mode started out on FIFA with a million or so users, it quickly took off. Within five years of its launch, over 20 million players were playing FIFA Ultimate Team. It also expanded to EA Sports' other offerings like Madden, NHL, and NBA Live. And even non-EA Sports AAA games like NBA 2K and MLB The Show introduced their own card collecting modes. By 2014, over 60% of players, according to EA, played Ultimate Team modes. And that number has only grown. As things continued into the Xbox One and PS4 era of gaming, things took some turns for the worst. Most EA Sports offerings left PC for years, leaving only Xbox and PlayStation players able to enjoy games like Madden and NHL. Madden finally returned to the PC after an 11 year absence with Madden 19, while games like NBA Live and NHL have yet to return to the platform. Other titles like the aforementioned NBA Street and NFL Street haven't seen releases since 2007 and 2006 respectively. Even baseball lost mainstream competition as EA Sports' MVP Baseball ended in 2005, while 2K's MLB 2K series last saw a release in 2013 with the terribly received MLB 2K13. And lastly, we saw the death of the NHL 2K series, which saw some fun installments like NHL 2K5 and 2K10. As we've gone through the 2010s and reached the end of the decade, Sports gaming has become something of a mess. AAA competition remains non-existent for most sports, while the games that are around fail to really add anything year over year. Instead, we seem to be shown more and more reasoning for titles like Madden, NBA, and more to move to a biennial release schedule. From small things like forgetting to change out logos, to bigger issues like game ruining bugs, it just appears to fans that these games are truly becoming nothing more than yearly roster updates. Now I get that as technology demand increases for these games, it's hard to do more in a single year development schedule. That's why the best way to solve for that is to move to an every other year cycle. It allows more time to fix legacy issues, improve the modes and gameplay already in the game, and even add big new features for players. Since 2013 when the PS4 and Xbox One released, the focus has shifted even more to CCGs than anyone outside the companies themselves could have imagined. Esports events from Madden, FIFA, and NHL focus pretty much solely on collectible card games. NBA 2K is the only AAA game that does something different with the NBA 2K League that acts as a true sports league with the backing of the NBA. And in my opinion, it's one of the best concepts to come out of sports gaming in quite some time. Obviously, we know why they use collectible card games. They're popular and they make money. The problem with the rise of CCGs isn't their popularity. It's that other modes have suffered. EA Sports NHL, for example, has seen modes like Be A Pro become watered down wastes of space, while men's franchise mode continues to see minimal updates while keeping things pretty much the same over the years. 
I mean, just look at the relocation options available to you in the mode. It's been the same for half a decade now. But if there's any bright spot in AAA games, it's NBA 2K's My GM and My League modes and MLB The Show's Road to the Show. Those are without question the best franchise and single player career modes in sports gaming today. But they aren't without their flaws either. NBA 2K's servers continue to be a disaster for online My League players, while Road to the Show has issues with realistic off the field player movement. It's just sad we've hit a point where a remake of a PlayStation 1 kart racer just took home a sports slash racing game of the year award at the Game Awards 2019. If that doesn't tell you just where things stand right now, I don't know what will. But that doesn't mean everything's all bad. Whereas the AAA offerings have started to suffer due to their own apparent greed as well as cutting budgets despite record profits, the indie scene has soared to new heights. Games like Out of the Park Baseball, which added its own CCG known as Perfect Team in 2018, became the poster child for sports management games alongside the Football Manager series. Super Mega Baseball has taken the sports gaming world by storm with its simple gameplay and fun over the top visuals. And for football fans, games like Axis Football and Maximum Football are targeting specific areas to appease fans looking for something other than Madden. Then you have titles like NBA Playgrounds and the Golf Club, which look to bring smaller studio offerings to the mainstream only to be picked up by AAA companies. In this case, that company's 2K games for both. Now that doesn't mean the games in the series are doomed or ruined in the future. In fact, it allows an increased budget for these titles that aren't tied to an annual release like the main AAA games. But of course, the biggest success story in sports gaming today has to be that of Rocket League, a simple concept that cracked into the mainstream, becoming one of the most successful games of the decade, let alone sports games. In the nearly five years since its launch, Rocket League is available on every major platform and has over half a million players actively playing at any one time. And not to leave racing titles out of this, I firmly believe we're living in the best era for racing games. 704 Games has brought NASCAR gaming back from the dead and has found success even with their own esports league. Codemasters? Well, they continue to set the bar with games like the Dirt and Formula One series. And Turn 10 Studios has made Forza Motorsport the racing game that has people wanting an Xbox or a gaming PC. So if you really think about it, things aren't all that bad right now with sports games. So we know where things stand as we head into 2020, but where will it go from here? Well, the obvious thing is to understand that CCGs will continue to grow. As long as they bring in millions of dollars to these companies, they aren't going anywhere. They're just going to get bigger. Modes like Diamond Dynasty and Ultimate Team will continue to get the bulk of the updates and improvements each year. Franchise and career modes, well, they'll see their updates, but it's tough to see a major portion of the development be devoted to them especially as we enter the next generation of console gaming. Development teams are focused on getting the games ready for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, and it's more likely that it's full steam ahead on not making the same mistakes that some games have seen the last two generations. Madden 06 for the 360 and NHL 15 on PS4 and Xbox One are the two big ones that come to mind. To expect any major improvements next year would be moot, as it's likely you'll see an overhaul for some games in 2021 and beyond. That said, stranger things have happened, though it's still unlikely to me to see anything really big next year. But speaking of 2021 and beyond, fans may have something to finally be really excited about. The return of NCAA sports games. Thanks to recent rulings regarding players being compensated for their likenesses, as well as interest from developers, it's likely we finally see the return of licensed NCAA sports titles for the first time since 2013. There's no doubt that that would be one of the best things that could come to fans, but because of all the litigation and development time, the earliest we see an NCAA game would likely be 2022 or 2023. Now regarding competition, don't expect to see the glory days return. With the cost of games being what they are, getting multiple AAA studios to release an NHL or an NFL game to compete with the juggernauts that already exist isn't likely to happen anytime soon, if ever again. We've seen it attempted with NBA Live in recent years, but EA Sports just hasn't been able to make a dent into the market of NBA 2K. 
MLB was one of the only chances to see it, but recent news of the MLB The Show series going to platforms other than PlayStation starting in 2021 likely puts an end to that. It's possible though that games like NBA Playgrounds and maybe even an NFL spinoff become the arcade offerings for diehard fans now that studios like 2K are involved. Circling back to the biennial release idea, it's really hard to think that ever happens despite my massive desire for it. Again, it's all about the money, and EA, 2K, Sony, and more make too much of it to justify stopping what works. The only thing that may shake that trend is if they decide to move to a subscription model for the games. It's been talked about at times, but kinda was pushed under the rug. Back in a 2017 interview with Bloomberg, EA CEO Andrew Wilson said that he can picture a time where games like Madden don't come out every year. In the interview, Wilson said that there's a world where it gets easier and easier to move that code around where we may not have to do an annual release. He continued by saying that we can really think about those games as a 365 day live service. Now that phrase, easier to move that code around, is one that always stood out from that interview. Moving code and making it fit seems to be like what's been going on the past few years. It makes the idea of moving to a subscription service more plausible, even though I really don't see that becoming the norm. As a software developer, and yeah, that's my background in addition to spending the last decade or so as a journalist. I understand that though it's possible to just simply move code around, it's rarely ever that easy. Just one line of wrong code could cause countless problems for the software. Even something as simple as moving code and not renaming something could lead to a feature not working entirely. It's a very, very fine line. So to me, that statement from Wilson about moving code comes off as ignorant to what the programming actually entails. As for the general future of sports gaming, I suspect it's only going to get worse on the AAA level before it gets any better for non-CCG players. Until the games really start hurting the bottom line, I wouldn't hold my breath on seeing priorities change. I mean, look at WWE 2K. It was a game that over the last couple years really suffered due to the focus of putting a lot of elements, mainly unlockables, behind a paywall. With WWE 2K20, the game released in such a broken state that the future of the series was put into question. Sales are down from 2K19 to 2K20, and players have even gone as far as receiving refunds due to the broken state of the game. That's the bottom line being hurt, and that's what it'll take to bring change to a game. On the indie level, the news will be much better. Smaller studios will continue to provide players with alternatives to the microtransaction filled offerings of main titles. Games like Axis Football, Super Mega Baseball, Mutant Football League, and others will continue to fill that gap as long as the support remains from the community. For all of us, however, the state of sports gaming is a pretty mixed bag. For some, it's never been better and it's only going to get better. For others, things are gloomy and continuing to get worse as they feel their voices aren't really being heard. Now we want to hear from all of you. Where do you sit with your thoughts on the state of sports gaming? Do you think sports games are only getting better, or are things as gloomy as some may think? Let us know in the comment section below, and subscribe to Sports Gamers Online and hit that bell to be notified whenever a new video goes live. If you want to join the discussion even more, subscribe to our subreddit at r slash sportsgamersonline, and don't forget to visit our website at sportsgamersonline.com.